Hi everyone, welcome back. So I'm doing some routine maintenance on the RV-10. It might be a little more routine than many of you think. And uh, as usual, Carol comes out and says, aren't you gonna show everybody? So she's right, the picture's worth a thousand words, even though I think all of this is in my book, the maintenance book. So let's talk about some things and what prompts some of the maintenance. You've heard me talk about intake gaskets over the years, so we're gonna show you how to do that. Uh, like homings, we all joke about them uh, marking their territory with oil leaks. And basically what happens over time is you get a little bit of drop here, there, a couple places inside that engine compartment that leak, and it looks like you got a big mess on your hands. And a little bit of time with a flashlight, you can figure out where many of those leaks are coming from. So that was the quest I was on this time, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm doing to stop some of the leaks. Right? It just happens with age. So let's talk about those intake gaskets first. So this is your intake tube on a Lycoming engine on any of the O360s, IO540s, O540s, etc. Okay, and you've got two places here that actually get aged over time. You've got the intake gaskets right here. You can see I've laid out all six here. What happens is they get brittle. You can see they'll leak. This one's actually wet from fuel. This one and pulling it off just kind of cracked off there. They all get hard. I do change these about every 300 hours or so. It just makes a difference in a nice, smooth, idling engine and starting is really when you'll notice uh, you've got leaking intake gaskets. So in the process of replacing those, let's just talk about that. So basically this is held up on the engine with two bolts. Okay, so you're going to pull those down and then it's stuck to the engine with this little hose here. And typically there's two clamps on there. Most of the time they're worm gear clamps. I don't like the worm gear clamps, so I use what's called these constant pressure clamps here. You can see these, see how they overlap? So you get a real nice constant pressure around this thing. Now to use those, you'll need this special tool. You can see here, let me go back and it takes a little bit of pressure, but what it does is it spreads this wide open Okay, and then you can slide this on and put it onto the engine. And when you release it, you get a real nice tight clamp all the way around there. So uh, I'll show you those installed. What we're going to do here is show you on the, on the wing here, the components, and then we'll take some still pictures uh, to show you exactly where everything goes. So basically, it's very easy to do these. It'll only take you about 15 minutes per cylinder. Uh, loosen these bolts. Okay, now when you pull these out, you're going to see three components. You've got the bolt, you've got an internal star washer, and you've got a uh, AN960-10 uh, washer. Okay, actually dash four. Uh, these are quarter inch by 1.25 inch bolts. Okay, they're quarter by 20 thread, by the way. It's not your national fine thread. So first thing you want to do is throw away this internal star washer. Never reuse those. Okay, so always use a fresh one. So I'll stage those. And then what you want to do is remove the gasket. Now, if they've been on there for a while, they're going to take a little bit of work to get them off. Typically, you want to use something that's not going to leave marks on the flange on the cylinder. So you know, either a phenolic tool, uh, um, something like that. And once you finally get these off, I'll use a Dremel with a, uh, either a stainless or a brass wire thing turning very slowly. Okay, and I'll get up in there and I'll clean that off real nice, the flange on the cylinder, and we'll show you some pictures of that. And so then uh, clean up everything. Also clean up this. Sometimes you'll have some uh, paper gasket stuck to the flange here on the intake tube. And sometimes it'll get stuck inside here too. So make sure that's all cleaned up. Because it's really important that this nestles down inside here. And then the new gasket. By the way, I like using the superior gaskets, which Bruce has. Okay, you got to punch the center out. And make sure that you orient this on this side of the flange. So you're going to slide this into the airplane and then put this on top. I have seen them installed like this, okay? That is wrong, that will not work. You will not get a seal. You can see what's gonna happen here is this ends up right against the aluminum cylinder flange, so it does not seal. So uh, make certain you put that on right. Again, this goes on, put it on, and then put these up. 
okay? And then as I mentioned, you're gonna put your bolts in with the fresh lock nut and then tighten those up. So that's your intake gaskets and we'll show you some pictures of the tube installed there. So that's nothing to do with oil leaks. So now if we take a look at where might we have some oil leaks. So while you've got these off, what's really easy to replace, if you look over here on the engine, you've got what's called cylinder drain back lines. Each cylinder from the rocker cover has a cylinder drain back tube. And I don't know if you can see up inside there, I'll get you some close up pictures. Uh, but right up in there, there goes to a tube to connect it back to uh, the cylinder uh, case, the uh, actual case of the engine. Uh, you've got to have a uh, uh, hose connection there because you can't have a hard connection. These cylinders actually move. So uh, we've got to put a little piece of hose in there. And so the hose you're going to want to use there is just mil 6000-6. So it's a 3 8 inch ID hose, okay? And that fits on the uh, here and then onto the engine on the drain back tube. So you can see here what these look like. And see how they're all wet? Over time, they just get hard. These are right underneath the cylinder. So all the hot air blows right past them. And over time, they just get hard and they leak. You can see the oil there. So that's a source of oil leaks in the engine compartment. Okay. These, basically to do a four cylinder engine, you'll need about a foot and you need a little more than that to do a six cylinder engine. They're all about two and a half inches long. Now the easy way to cut this hose is the same kind of tool that you use for PVC. Uh, uh, piping uh, is just, you know, it goes on here and it makes a real nice cut on the hose. Okay. And I really advocate you use something like this or a razor blade will work. Don't cut it on the bandsaw. Bandsaws will leave a whole bunch of junk in there and that's just going to drain back into your engine. So, uh, you know, make a nice clean cut with this tool. So now there's another area that can leak over time. For those of you who have quick drains, Here's the Safe Air Quick Drain. I love these. They work really, really nicely. And they have three O-rings in them. They've got two here at the top, and they've got one inside here at the bottom. The nice thing is they're rebuildable. I'll tell you the part number for the O-ring, but you won't remember. When you look up this part number at Spruce, it actually tells you what O-rings you need. So you need three for each one. Two little ones here at the top, and one goes inside. It all comes apart. You can replace those O-rings, and you'll stop the little bit of drip that you're getting out of here. What happens if you think about how this thing works, it's sitting right in the bottom of the uh, sump. So all your ugly oil is sitting right on top of this thing. Uh, you know, after a thousand hours or so, the O-rings get a little hard. Every time you open it up, you get some sludge in there and then you close it and eventually they'll just kind of leak and drip. And you won't notice it, but you'll see oil elsewhere in the engine compartment and wondering where that's coming from. One other thing I had that's uh, failed on us most recently is the red cube. That's your fuel flow sensor. Uh, and I guess after 2,500 hours, it, it, it did good. But uh, I notice now when we go to start and prime, I'm not getting a fuel flow indication. And once in a while it dropped off. So I'm in the process of replacing that as well. And what do you use? What do you put on it to protect it from heat? So we use the heat barrier tape. Uh, I'll show a picture of that in the video. But yes, if you put that fuel cube in the engine compartment, which is the best place for it, somewhere between your fuel flow uh, controller or your fuel servo and the spider on an injected engine is the best place to put that. So put it in the engine compartment, but do wrap it with some kind of heat protection. There, are, there is electronics inside that sensor and they'll last longer if you do that. So I can't think of anything else. One of the things I did notice is uh, I do feel a little bit of vibration in the mixture level that was never there. And I've been trying to chase that down and figure it out. And uh, I've noticed we've got a leaking uh, motor mount here. So not looking forward to changing this, but these are silicone filled motor mounts. You can see the leak there and there's a little bit of a gap there. So I'm thinking that's what's causing a little bit of vibration there. So uh, I know you're wondering how are we going to change those? So basically what I'm going to do is get an A-frame over there and I'm going to move it around here to the front and we're going to kind of pull up the engine from the bottom here and see if we can't replace those. I will be disconnecting the exhaust system. We don't want to put any stress on components as we're lifting this engine. And uh, I think that's about it for the, for the maintenance we're doing here. It's a little bit of work though. I can 
I can talk about it quicker than it can get done. But uh, just break it down into individual things, and uh, you'll find that you can do this too. It'll stop the oil leaks, and your engine will idle and start a whole much better if you pay attention to those intake gaskets. So one other thing I always recommend when you have your engine compartment down is, you know, the exhaust system moves around a lot. It, it gets a lot of heat, and it's important to keep all these slip joints loose. Any of the ball joints that you see here, if you can zoom in and see this ball joint right there. There's a ball joint there. There are slip joints here, and there's another ball joint right there. So the important thing is every time you have it down, I always put some mouse milk. Any kind of pet and training oil is good, but I find the mouse milk works really good. You can pick up a bunch of syringes fairly cheap on Amazon. It allows you to just put the right amount and get in there and uh, without making a mess. And it will keep your exhaust system uh, nice and free. You don't want that exhaust system cracking.